So my name is Patrick Goler. I am the Client Success Manager with Datapipe. And this is session ISM 212, how McDonald utilizes Amazon Web Services. We're gonna have Frank Elmeyer, the CTO for McDonald's, on stage with us and speaking about McDonald's background and decision on how to utilize the public cloud and AWS and how they approach that decision in partnering with Datapipe. So we will have time for questions at the end of the session. But first, we're gonna give a little background on Datapipe. We are a global managed service provider. We have offices across uh, Europe, Asia, and the United States. And we deliver 24 by seven managed service support across public cloud infrastructure and hybrid solutions. Over 75% of our staff is, is oriented towards customer support and engineering. And we are an Amazon Web Services premier consulting partner in one of a handful of global centers of excellence for managed services. Uh, in addition to the feedback we get from our customers, we are also highly regarded with Gartner Group and with Forrester in, in the magic quadrant for Gartner for managed services in the public cloud space and with Forrester for managed services. In addition, we also provide professional services in cloud enablement, which we've recently enabled many of our, of our Fortune 100 and larger customers to take advantage of AWS as they integrate with, with their environment. We've also recently acquired a company called DualSpark to enhance our services, to provide automation support services, uh, application selection, and, and cloud center of excellence uh, consulting work. So I'm gonna have Frank speak a little bit here about McDonald's in the background, then we're gonna talk about through the process of how McDonald's selected public cloud partners in AWS and Datapipe. You know, how they selected workloads, determine how to work together and how to collaborate and, and work through uh, application selection, security concerns, and how to integrate mobility into a global footprint. Frank has over 25 years of experience leading IT organizations. He joined McDonald's in 1988. Uh, over the next 10 years, he led several initiatives in Europe, culminating with the deployment of their worldwide financial systems. And then in 2000, he was asked to lead the entire IT organization within Europe. As of 2010, he has held the title of Chief Technology Officer for McDonald's Corporation in, in Oak Brook, Illinois. Um, he and his wife, Gabby, enjoy traveling, enjoy experimenting with new foods, and Frank will be happy to tell you why Germans are the best footballers in the world. <laughs> So I want to welcome Frank Elmar. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick, for the introduce, introduction. First of all, I have to give you one thing you hear that I'm a German already, you take that early. So you have to listen. I have an accent. I relocated five years here. Unfortunately, so far my accent had not relocated. So but we get, we're going we're going through that one, okay? Okay, who we are. We at McDonald's, we are a modern progressive burger company. We want to create day to day a modern experience for our customer. If you see here some numbers, we're having more close to 2 million employees supporting our 35,000 restaurants in 100. 90 markets which ends in a revenue of 2014 of 28 billion. Having said that one, I say in the center, our 70 million customer we have every day. And here you see exactly what we need to provide. We need to provide them a modern experience and we have to engage them in the way they want to be engaged. And that brought us on the whole journey, which I'd like to share some of our learnings and what we have seen. We as a global IT organization, we really thinking we need to enable more than technology. The times that technology is good enough, and we heard it this morning in the keynotes, it has to be on top. So we strongly believe we have to provide a technology experience for people. And people include our customer, our employees, and our partners. If we do that one right, I think we meet their needs, we meet them where they want to be met, 
Yeah, we can serve them in the way they want to be served. Yeah, and they can see us where they want to see us. And this is for both sides. Going with this one, Patrick, I think we can start a little bit. Yeah. Asking a couple of questions. Thanks, Frank. So, can you tell us what were some of the key factors that led you to the decision to build out in Amazon Web Services? Yeah, it was, it was really the demand coming to our business that we need to modernize and put our global e-commerce platform on a completely different level. And if you just see the fact by 70 million customer, yeah, it needs to be something big. Yeah, and well, if you see that the, during the day you have peaks, you have breakfast time, you have lunch time, you have dinner time, this cannot be a just static environment. The other thing is very clear, we really believe it must be reliable, yeah, and it must grow, because we understood that we would start, and it should be a global nature, but if we would start, it should grow with the demand. So we really believe that the cloud would be a pretty good fit. So, and what about AWS specifically? Yeah, what we did here, we not jump immediately and say AWS because it starts with an A, it's the first, if you go <laughs> down the list, no, we, there's another one with the A, no. <laughs> no, we really, we really did a process and really do an evaluation, assessment of what cloud possibilities we have. And first of all, because we've taken one thing, you see the nature of the data we're having there, very, very seriously security. So a big part of our assessment was security features and functions as well, can we stay with the cloud solution in compliance with privacy laws? A big part for us where we look along thing in. The next thing we're looking in was reliability. The other thing is we want to find a partner who is there. Over the last five to three to five years, you hear all the announcement about what people want to be. So we validated as well who is already there, who has some of the feature working today, yeah, and some in, in the near term. And what we find out, there are a lot of promises in the whole industry, yeah? And something is really, you have to really make a check what is real. So that's what another big criteria. The other criteria we talk about, we need an elastic solution, horizontal and vertical scale. It was very important for us just to have an economic meaningful point here. And then we apply all the other things, cultural fit, yeah? Really best in class, just the, the typical things what you would apply as well. But the big things for us was really security, scale, yeah, and there. So having an established partner who has a track record of yeah. success. Absolutely. Very good. So in, in working with AWS, you decided to work with a partner uh, on the managed services side. You know, can you talk a little bit about the decision process that led you to work with Datapipe? Yeah, similar process. As, as I mentioned, for us, we, we had an e-commerce platform very traditional build in data center, in different data center, not really connected, not easy to scale, you know. You heard it all this morning in the keynote, you know, you want to put a version down. All the problems everybody would, would face, so we think we need to change the foundation completely. As we, this was new for us, we all did the virtualization, we had private clouds, this was all what we have, but we have really no idea what the cloud would bring to us. And you hear, I avoid the word public, because for too, too many times, we, we put the public in the world and then it creates something, because who would give this thing to the public? So we internally talk about the cloud. Yeah, we have the one and we need a jump start. And for the jump start, we did the same thing. We went through and get a list and it was built again on normal sourcing procurement metrics, but here very important for us was a partner recommended by many and one of them should be the cloud provider we're going for. I think that was critically important. Another thing was, it's a cultural fit. We at McDonald's need a culture fit. So it must be nimble, agile, you know, learning. And you must be ready, to, it must be dialogue. So collaborative, you don't want to have a partner with an order taker. And we need somebody who has done it before. One thing, this was why we came to the decision to leverage data pipe to get a start point. And we're starting, I think, nearly 12 months ago. It starts all here. Yeah, you know, so you know, McDonald's has a very diverse, large IT organization. You work with a lot of partners, uh, a lot of a lot of vendors. Uh, you know, the, the uh, it's a global operation. You know, can you talk a little bit about the role that DataPipe fills in uh, in enabling the, the cloud solutions with your team? Yeah, it, it, it's multiple roles. First of all, we we McDonald's believe in the three-legged stool. I don't know if you heard about the one. It's really we believe everybody who is involved must win. 
Yeah, so it's very important for us to deepen our culture. So we was really looking for a partner and for an open and honest partnership. Second one is acting as a system integrator. Is one thing is given, but we looked for more. We looked for really a partner who help us, who work with us to create this new platform and build it from the foundation. So I think that was very important, that we need somebody who can come in, lead us, train us, and then as well transfer some of the knowledge to the retained organization. And it's really interesting, whatever I hear this morning in the key session, we could replay many of the things. As well, we have done high level ITO outsourced, and yeah, we bring some of the deep skills back to really fulfill business needs. So it's a very interesting part that everybody seems to have the same problems. Yeah, uh, I've really enjoyed seeing the McDonald's team and the Data Pipe team that's on site with working with you, you know, really working in a collaborative fashion back and forth. I think the, this is, was really key as well. It creates a dynamic. We created this, we embedded all our partners in our team. So you see different people with different badges running around in our building and you don't know you see a supplier who is in the project team. I think this creates this one team feeling the people sit close can solve very quick problems or bring it to an escalation point if needed. Very good. So, you know, once you have the partnerships uh, established, you know, obviously you need to get some work done. You know, what... Sometimes. Is that, <laughs> you know, what's the, pri the prioritization for projects? You know, how did you go about you know, putting a criteria in place to know what was most important to work on first and, and next and so on? Yeah, this time we take a little bit different approach because the demand for having a modern and relevant custom engagement platform out on a global scale as fast as possible. We make a decision not to do a big portfolio rationalization process. We say we focus on one and go deep. So we take this one and say all workloads related to this one goes first. And they're going and we could re-architect a couple of things. We're seeing now the outcome because now we have a good process that we could put other workloads down, but we this time really make a decision, put all our priorities behind one thing, and try to do it good, fast, and that was why we're ending with our e-commerce platform here. It was really, it was a little bit simpler. We don't have to do all this stuff. We all know you can, you can dev development and testing systems. We all know that one. But we don't focus on that one. We really want to have, for us, a very mission critical solution out there as soon as possible and want to get, start to deploy it around the world. Yeah, so, so you took advantage of, of uh, initiatives you had that you wanted to bring out to the, to the rest of, yeah. the, of the world and then, and then have it born first in the cloud, essentially. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned the, uh, you know, the three-legged stool concept earlier. Uh, you know, uh, Amazon uh, provides a lot of resources, uh, a lot of interaction, Datapipe does, uh, your other vendors, you know, uh, and your staff. You know, can you talk about, you know, you know how do, how do you, uh, have you seen the process work uh, to collaborate and iterate on, on making sure that the solutions that are being put out into the cloud are appropriate for the, for the workload, for security, scale, and so on? Yeah, as I mentioned already, you know, for me, key is always an open and honest discussion. As soon as you have a partner in there who becomes an order taker, it's the same internally. If, if you as an IT organization becomes an order taker, there's a high risk that you're missing a few things. But this only can go if you have as well the right to challenge. And challenge must be positive. So I believe in positive friction. And I saw my team that they're already smiling there. So we need to have a couple of good discussions. But positive is there for moving forward. So we establish exactly this kind of work environment. We, we created a dedicated cloud team with different functions from application team, infrastructure, different areas of the world, data pipe, AWS. And the first job was really to find how they want to work together. I don't believe in that you say people, this is how we're working, that's what we have done all the time. They define their metrics, they define how they want to work. So we did a lot of whiteboarding, open discussion, so it took a while. So you, you watch them and say at one time it starts to work. So they're finding something I think very interesting, which we're now taking over in a culture, this dedicated thing, and they all define together a journey. And the end of this one will be a cloud center of excellence, a global one. I think many of the people who started there, it creates really a, a fresh energy inside the organization. Because we all know, many people in our industry like to do some more cool stuff. Yeah, not that the other stuff is not important, but there is the more cool stuff. So it was easy to get people who want to work on this team. Yeah, so you know, I agree with you that, that friction and, and solving that friction is, is the best way to, to, to get leaps forward. 
you know, and, and certainly, you know, it's been a, a, a very uh, uh, interesting process that we've gone through, uh, you know, and, and I think there, you know, there have been a lot of interesting challenges that we've, that we've solved and, and more to come around integrating, uh, you know, your, on, your, your legacy processes and making sure that everybody that, that has a stake in the end result uh, is involved and, and understanding where, where things maybe need to change uh, to improve uh, both, you know, uh, within uh, what we're putting from a solution standpoint together up into the cloud, but also, you know, in that process on the backside. You know, can you talk maybe about some of the, some of those challenges around uh, integrating, uh, you know, um, traditional corporate IT security, for instance, or, or, uh, or uh, expectations around access to systems that people had traditionally maybe that, that they have to think about things differently in the cloud? Yeah, no, I think it's very important that if you, if you go, it must be a journey. We don't start and throw everything away what we have. We have a couple of pretty good processes, you know, like change enablement is very deep just to our system. We are federated, we are global, you know, we have different uh, stakeholders. So we use our change enablement, we use our intake, we use our reference architectures. The only thing what I could see after a short time, they are now much more leaner. And that's the biggest surprise. They are faster, leaner, and deliver the same result. I think so we could bring some of this culture over. But I think it was very good. Yeah, if the uh, you know being able to uh, to uh, kind of feed feed those those improvements back into the process to improve the speed and the quality of the deliverable, has, has been very important to the organization. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think it starts all that we, we sit down at the beginning and in the first weeks, as the team come together, they really define what they want to achieve. So they're not starting with the how; they're really working on what and why first but set very clear targets and objectives and then define measurements. So if something gets out and something turns out to red, yeah, if what's on a agreed base, so everybody understand why it's red. So if you have an understanding that something needs some attention, it's easier. I think in this regularity that you follow up things is nothing new. We just applied, I would say, in a friendly way, very strict PMO approach to this group as well. But I think it has never came across as felt this way. And there was, there was a couple of crises, and then you have one thing, what I think is very important, you have executive commitment and engagement on all sides. So if we come to a point, and as you all can believe, you have to negotiate a couple of things, you have to understand you want to have the right level of resources, it's all a little bit friction, but if you have this executive level commitment and accountability, it works pretty well. So yeah, the, I'm glad you mentioned that commitment. You know, the, uh, you know, as we work, work through, uh, processes and and, and, uh, and and broke new ground. You know, can you talk about a little bit about that engagement, maybe maybe with uh, executives and leadership from AWS and also from DataPipe? Yeah, during, during the whole processes, we brought all right levels together. So we have executive relationships, and they're all both committed. That started already very early in, in a contract phase. So we, we get the the contract signed and all the agreements signed in a very fast way because there was a commitment and understanding what we all want to achieve. And this filtered them down. So, and I would say, maybe it's a little bit too strong, but during the process, it becomes something that, first of all, a very deep respect. Because I remember one time, one of my team members came to me and said, say, they are very smart. And so there was this respect that somebody could learn from each other. I think what helps, incredible. So this was one thing, and the other thing, I name it, open, honest. Yeah? If something is wrong, if you de describe it neither, you don't make it right. So and if you have some mutual respect, if you have the right processes, if you have the right partnership, you can bring it to the table in all layers. And it's really interesting. Uh, we have only four or five things where really things get escalated. So every layer was empowered to solve their problems. If they could not solve it, timing wouldn't be an issue. If you cannot solve something for two weeks, maybe you need some help. That works pretty well. So we have a very strict process behind the one. Problems need to be solved in groups where they occur. If they could not, it went up. Interesting as well, internally, we brought everybody in. Our legal department was fully with us, I think incredible. We brought our CISO in, fantastic. Yeah, we brought our application leaders in, great partnership. We, we brought our operations in our marketing, our digital team. So I think everybody knows what we're doing. I think that was a big key. So you know, establishing uh, trust and credibility at multiple levels throughout the organization and at, you know, also within the partnership with AWS and with DataPipe has been very critical. Yeah, and again, it's very important that everybody understand there is some knowledge in all places. Yeah? It's not, because of the typical fear, you bring an outsider in and some people feel, oh, we don't know anything. We believe we know a lot about our business. 
Yeah, and that's exactly the reason why we brought external people in who knows a lot about cloud and how to apply cloud and adopt cloud. So I think it was a good mixture. Uh, I think it's also been important to know that you know in in working the, in building that trust that, that it's not just a, a one directional uh, learning. You know that we've all learned from each other through the process and, and, and fed that back in to make it better. Absolutely. So you know, accountability I think is also an important uh, concept in this kind of relationship. Uh, understanding you know what we're responsible for, understanding you know what McDonald's is responsible for, and and and, and what what those those uh, demarcation points look like so that we have good expectations and, and, can, and can deliver. You know, you know, can you talk a little bit about how um, McDonald's in general with your vendors, but then specifically with AWS and, and uh, Datapipe, you know, have a, uh, put accountability as a, a first and foremost into the, the relationship? Yeah, again, I'm, I'm, I'm writing back to this one. I, it's really the partnership. We believe in an equal system of suppliers and partners, and we're putting very clear down what we expect and we make it measurable. Yeah, and based on that one, I think we try to create a high level of transparency and clarity as much as you can at every stage of the pro process. Yeah, and we have a couple of targets. Timing was the targets. Yeah, performance, we want to achieve was the target. Throughput was the target. Yeah, a level of automation was the target. So we could really take more the emotional out. I don't like the way you're doing things. To we need to run so many so many, so many transactions per hour, you know, can be achieved the one and what needs to be done. So I think it was all, bi all built to the business outcome. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about, you know, the, the, the global nature and the scale that you talked about earlier. Uh, McDonald's is going, going through a lot of change uh, organizationally, uh, you know, dir directionally with your customers and, uh, and expansion in your global business. You know, what, you know, what does the flexibility of, of uh, the cloud mean to McDonald's in that respect? Yeah, I can make a very short one, one, one factor really as I thought about the questions here was one thing, AWS where we are. And this is, that's a big part. So that we have global scale, we have geographical locations, so to do that one, I think that was, also, that was very important. And then it's, it's a big size company as well. So that's what we put down here. So how does that compare and contrast maybe to, you know, the ways that you've traditionally done things on premise? Yeah, I think a good learning is, is the high level of standardization. You see here the reference architecture. So one of the cloud characteristics is that you, it's repeatable. You can consume it and repeat it. So as we move for reason and build out an instance in, in, in Europe, yeah, we know it of all the experience. We have the same data center. But you know, every data center is a little bit different. Even if you have all the same and you want to just put a workload over, you find so many little things. And here we could spin up something in, really in hours. We was ready for testing. So I think this was one thing that you could repeat a high level of standard and world class infrastructure, what we see. Okay. So uh, mobility uh, is a, a key initiative for McDonald's on the, in a global footprint. You know, how, do, how has the cloud really enabled you to accelerate that, that uh, push towards uh, getting closer to your customers? Yeah, first of all, give us a platform. Yeah, it's not give us everything, but give us a platform to really have a solution ready globally, which is secured, which is compliant with data privacy regulation, and give local markets enough flexibility to do the one. And if you talk about one application we have here, we have it here in the US, so if you go to the application store and you download, look, McDonald's the first application, you download it, if you register, you have a free sandwich. If you don't register, you have an offer nearby, so we're starting really with offering. Yeah, the next thing will be punch cards. In some parts of the area of the world, we're doing already mobile ordering, up to home delivery. So it's very important for our customer, but some as well what we're seeing is able to share information, so mobility in general is a big part as well, do collaboration a global, as a global distributed IT organization. Yeah, you need to have tools that you can work globally together. And it's a big learning for all of us. Yeah, it's, we all know, you're sitting with people in a room is one thing, having people over video conference coming in over phone is another level of how you work and we believe mobility will help to collaborate and share ideas. Very good. So, you know, especially with that application and that initiative, you, know, you mentioned you know, you've got a lot of uh, uh, requirements and restrictions from a privacy and information standpoint. Uh, the global footprint obviously helps you to address that. You know, how do you balance that along with the uh, 
the um, need to standardize that how you're how you're delivering your, your your services and applications out to customers. It, we, 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 we keep this. It's a typical thing. We try to control the core and let loose at the edge. You know, so the, for that one, the whole application architecture is built for that one to protect the backend with clear interfacing, yeah, with some, with some bus, and so to the front we have an API middleware layer. So that enables us, so the business logic stays here. We maintain our data, but you'll be flexible. Another flexibility is that's why you see them, and why it's always so hard to say the US is launching offers for good reason. Yeah. They're launching offers because it fits very well. You all know that the program at the moment is the all day breakfast. I hope you have heard the one in McDonald's. It's, it's coming, it's launching, so, and offers fits very well to that one in Australia with create your own taste, create your own burger. Ordering and customizing your ordering was more important. They're starting with offer and with product ordering. I think it gives us as well the flexibility to do a couple of things. Well, you also are increasing the speed of the feedback you get from customers to be able to iterate. That's, that's another thing. Why you do that one, it creates touch point, you know, with understanding your customer better. You can drive from general offer to a more personalized offer. You know, this is exactly. So we want to create value for a customer. For that one, we need to understand behavior driven offers and how we interact. It's really all about not only engaging and build a connection. Because today's world you need a connection with your customer. If you don't have a connection, you should build it. Because as more you understand your customer, understand the need and what your customer wants, as better you can serve your customer. Yeah, very good. You know, we, we've talked about trust a lot in the partnership between AWS, DataPipe, and McDonald's. Uh, you know, I think there's probably a bigger issue of trust, and that's with your customer and, and the data that, you're, that you are using to service them. You know, uh, information security has always been a big topic in the world. Uh, you know, you know how, do you, how do you see the, uh, the um, public, or the, the cloud, sorry, uh, being used uh, in, a, in a way to, to enhance the security footprint, and how do you integrate that with uh, your traditional IT security organization? Yeah, I think this is, this is the whole thing. So I, I believe in cloud since a long time. I remember I was sitting in a CTO console a couple of years ago in New York, and there was the top 10 CTOs, and I made a statement, and I said, was well, a little bit too early, then everything will be cloud, it will be happen. But now it happens, and there was regulation department that say, you know, it's not secure, we can never do the one. And we heard today that the cloud provider will find an answer for that one. Because if not, it's their core business. If you be in a regulated business, they will find that you can put your data, information, your application there. I believe if you really use what is available and you see it today, you have to break this one that cloud is not secure and your internal data center is secure. I think this is not a straight correlation. So you have to, to break the one, you have to say, we believe that we're even more secure on AWS than we could do it ever in our data center. And you heard this today from another speaker this morning in the keynote. With all the invention and services going in there, and how you can do things, you know, by VPCs, you know, you have route, con uh, you can control the router, the routing, the routing, you can really see events happening. You have good logging, yeah? I think it's even, if you apply all the new ideas, key management was for us critical, so that you can do the, the needed to secure your data, as well to do a needed separation. So for us, it was as well. So the biggest challenge we found was to explain to people that separation of data is not physically done anymore. Yeah, everybody understands if I say I have two data centers, here's the data from A and here's the data, center, here's the data from B. That's the physical separation between 500 miles, everything is perfect. No, I don't believe that. So to say that separation of data can be logically done today with tools and features and functions available in the cloud is one step to the one, and then you have to prove it, and then you have to apply all your current security rules and guidance, guidelines, and if you can apply them, and then you see even more possibilities, the logical step is you, you can do more and more should lead to your equally secure at least. A good statement, our, our, our CISO, he sent me yesterday an email, I say I'm, I'm talking to a couple of people, and I get a security question, he's always concerned if I talk about his security. No, and he said, one thing, he's very satisfied and he feels good, and the reason is that he sees the constant innovation, and you heard it this morning, coming in, giving you more features and products to even do a better job on protect your data and make your information secure. 
I think this is a very critical part. So I think this constant innovation and it, it's coming from companies like AWS is what you internally hardly could follow. Yeah, and, and working with your team, I mean, security is not something you do once. It's something that you integrate into the process. It has to be, so security is from us very at the early in our review, architecture review, security is one of the first steps. You know, so and if you fill out patterns, we, we created something like you're filling out some questionnaires. And we have to change them sometimes because some people get smart how to fill it out. But it leads to the next level of question. Because think about it, you, you want to have an initiative and you have to fill out 550 questions. Yeah? Half of them don't matter. So we try to make a couple of questions. And if you believe you have deep, it's all online, you need to go deep, deeper in. We're asking you more questions. And we immediately offer you help from, from an architect, a security architect, domain architect. And this has created a completely different awareness because I think if you architect security in your application from the beginning and into your data structure, it's so much easier to really guarantee it later. Great. Well, with the foundation that we built over the last year, you know, uh, rolling out the mobile, mobility applications, you know, how do you see the future for McDonald's in the cloud you know, in making decisions on, on which platforms and which applications are, are suited for the cloud and which aren't? Yeah, I think that's a good, good question. So we don't want to rush in. And I don't want to make statements like, in two years, everything is in the cloud. Because I believe in one thing. First of all, there are two things. There's one thing, cloud ready and cloud right. Yeah, cloud ready, you can put it into the cloud, but it will not create all the benefits you want to have. So there must be another reason why you do it. So we want to focus first on the cloud right application. That means if you put it down, we get all the benefits. Faster response time, easier to develop, easier to upgrade, yeah? better information flow. This will be our first step we're putting in. Will this lead over time that nearly everything will be in the cloud? Yes, and if you include software as a service offerings, a name that's a kind of cloud computing as well, I believe yes, only a little part will be stay in some VNAME traditional data center, but we have a really good rationalization process for them. So first of all, we start with rationalization, but we're asking three more, two more questions. One question is always we're asking, can we retire this application? This is the first question you have to ask. Can we retire them? Unfortunately, sometimes the answer is no. Fortunately, sometimes the answer is yes. So we try to really don't forget that every time we have a chance, we're asking this question. Can this be done somewhere else? Can this be done with something else? The second one is, can we consolidate things? And then we make a decision. And the decision where we host, cloud, and again, you will not hear the word public cloud, cloud, or in our traditional data center, is really dependent on a few things. On the architecture side, which define cloud ready, cloud right, yeah, and again, cloud ready means you can run it, you don't have a license problem, it will run, it will function, maybe even a little bit better perform. Cloud right is you can really do good things. You can use the agility, you can scale it down better, you have better performance, you can do things, you can integrate what you never could do before. So these two things, if you have done that one, we're putting down, are we compliant? That's another thing, is what we have to do to be compliant, where we have to put it, how we have to protect it, and the third one then, if you have the two first two answered, we have the economics. And the economics is just how much it will cost. So if you put this all together, we make a decision based on this one. That's why we still believe we going forward, we we're putting more and more to the cloud around our e-commerce platform. The next logical layer is more related application. Yeah, and then everything new, absolutely. You saw it today as well, so we are very aligned with this one. But there's no, no statement needed to be put everything in the cloud in the next two years. Because we believe the application portfolio we have today will change as well. So why moving and do the one? Very good. Frank, thank you for your time today. Thank you.